Sydney Cancer Genetics explains the Breast Cancer Pathology Report. Hi, I'm Dr Hilda High, a genetic oncologist. I work with Sydney Cancer Genetics at the Sand Clinic at the Sydney Adventist Hospital in Wurunga, Sydney, Australia. What I'm going to do today is to talk you through the Breast Cancer Pathology Report. I'll start with some analogies about what cancer is and how it occurs before stepping through a typical breast cancer report. This will not only help you to understand the different parts of the report, but also to understand why breast cancer treatments differ from person to person. So what is cancer? Let's use some analogies to try and understand. The first analogy likens cells to people. Normal cells are like adults. They know what the rules are and generally, generally they follow them. So a breast cancer cell knows what's expected and it behaves in a certain way. Precancer cells are like adolescents. In a way they're acting out, not following all the rules. For a cell, this means that it's collected a few mistakes in its DNA that make it different from a normal breast cell. I think of this as the piercing, tattoos, hairstyles and clothing choices of an adolescent. It's important to note that just like adolescents, not all pre-cancer cells become bad. A cancer cell, however, is a delinquent. It's collected so many mistakes that it no longer follows the rules or possibly doesn't even know what the rules are anymore. It grows when it shouldn't doesn't die when it should, and may move to different places in the body. Luckily, we have our immune system, which acts as a police force. It's very skilled at hunting down and destroying these rogue cells. Cancer is a genetic disease, that is, it's caused by mistakes that build up over time in important genes in cells. Genes can be thought of as books in a library. The books sit on specific shelves in the library called chromosomes. Each time a cell makes a copy of itself, it has to tra transcribe or copy all of the words in all of the books on all of the shelves. The image I have is of scribes laboriously copying out important books by hand. Of course, mistakes are made. These can vary from tiny spelling changes that really make no difference to mistakes in either key words or sentences that completely change the sense of the story. In some cases, Whole paragraphs, chapters or even whole books can be deleted. Also, a particular section may be photocopied many times and randomly placed in other books in other section of the library, causing chaos. And this is what cancer is. It's a vandalised library. Fortunately, we have multiple different spell checkers and proofreaders whose job it is to look for and fix these mistakes. In some families, a spell checker isn't working because of an inherited fault or mutation in a gene. In this case, the mistakes can build up faster and we may see more cancer or cancers occurring at a younger age. Now let's look at a, the pathology report. It describes several things. The tumour histology, the tumour size, invasiveness and grade, information about the tumour margins, as well as the lymph node status, and especially in the case of breast cancer, the tumour markers. Let's step through this one by one. Tumour histology is basically answering the question, what is this lump? Sometimes a lump may be normal, such as a cyst. Other times it may be abnormal, but still not a cancer. Some terms you may have come across either in your own report or that of a family member, a fibroadenoma, benign proliferative change and atypical hyperplasia. Sometimes there are very abnormal cells, but they're confined. This is referred to as carcinoma in situ, or DCIS or LCIS. Invasive carcinoma describes cancer cells that have broken through the surrounding membrane and this is usually described as either ductal or lobular cancer depending on where these cells originated. So we've discussed the histology and the invasiveness and size is pretty obvious so let's move on to grade. Tumor grade 
is really a way of describing how lazy or energetic a cancer is. The medical terms are indolent or aggressive, and pathologists have a scoring system, or several scoring systems, that are used to rank a tumour into low, intermediate or high grade. Sometimes you may hear a low-grade tumour described as, well, differentiated, that is, similar to normal breast cells, while a high-grade tumour may be described as poorly differentiated, that is, a chaotic mess that has, like, has little resemblance to a breast cell. T67 is another way of measuring aggressiveness, and you may see this on your pathology report. Chemotherapy and radiotherapy tend to work best in cells that are dividing more often, and some tumours are so lazy that chemotherapy is not needed. Let's look at some pictures to put these concepts into, into context. This is a drawing of the structures of the breast. You can see the ducts leading from the lobules to the nipple, as well as the connective tissue and fat between these tissues. Up here, in a higher power view, you can see the lobule and the duct in more detail. These are some pathology slides of normal breast tissue. This is a little section where you can see through a duct, and this is the connective tissue I was speaking about. In the high-powered view to the right, you can see the cells lining the duct, looking pretty similar to each other, and then here is some of that connective tissue again. Don't worry, I don't expect you to become a pathologist. In the case of DCIS, and this is a slide of low-grade DCIS, you can see here a more normal-looking duct, with another duct nearby where there is a crowding of the cells and they don't look quite normal. In the case of high grade DCIS, you can see that the cells are looking more chaotic and they don't look very similar to each other anymore. Over here, you can see a different kind of material. This is actually necrosis. The black material is calcium and this is what's often detected on a mammogram. Sometimes, if DCIS is widespread, a mastectomy may be recommended. This may seem strange, that you can have a lump removed when it's a cancer, but the whole breast removed for a precancer. This is because there may be invasive cancer hiding inside the areas of DCIS. The pathologist will look very carefully to see if the tumour is invaded beyond this pink membrane. This is breast cancer. On the left, you can see that the cells are no longer neatly organised and are invading into the surrounding tissues. On the right is an example of a high-grade cancer, and you can just see just how disorganised these cells have become. One of the most important things on a pathology report, after deciding if the lump is a cancer, is whether or not it's all been removed. That's why the edges of the tumour are closely inspected, to ensure that they're clear. In many cases, surgery is curative. However, as we still don't yet have the tools to determine which women may be at risk of a recurrence, chemotherapy and or radiotherapy is often offered unless the tumour is very small or very lazy. Another important factor on the pathology report is the lymph node status. This is usually described as being positive or negative, and if more than one node was removed, how many of the nodes were involved. Lymph nodes act as sieves, that is, they're there to catch any cells that may break away and help the immune system to destroy them. It's important to note that node positive disease, that is, cancer cells present in the lymph nodes, is not metastatic disease. Instead, it's often referred to as locally advanced and is very often curable. However, because the cells have demonstrated an ability to move, different chemotherapy regimens may be recommended for node-positive disease, and sometimes, even if a mastectomy has been performed, radiotherapy will be recommended. A key feature of the breast cancer pathology report is the tumour markers. Sometimes they may be described in a subsequent report called an addendum. One set of tumour markers have to do with the hormone status of the tumour. Most breast cancers are ER and PR positive. 
That is, they have many oestrogen and progesterone receptors on the outside of their cells. Pathologists can stain a tumour, as you can see here on the right hand side, and they count not only how many cells stain, but also how strongly these cells stain. The tumour is, this tumour is strongly positive for the oestrogen receptor. This is important because a hormone positive cancer can be starved by using hormonal therapies. In this case, some of the names you may be familiar with include tamoxifen, arimidex, famara and aromacin. The third receptor of importance is the HER2 receptor, as it can be blocked by targeted therapies such as Herceptin, again starving any cancer cells. We'll talk a bit more about HER2 in a moment. Triple negative cancers, as I'm sure you've realised, do not stain positive for the ER, PR or the HER2 receptors. Because hormonal and HER2 targeted therapies are unlikely to work against this kind of cancer, chemotherapy is often re recommended to give the best chance of cure. In some centres, basal markers will also be assessed. This is just a different way of looking at the tumour. Triple negative and basal cancers are uncommon. Although they're not exactly the same, many triple negative tumours are also basal tumours. This kind of tumour is more common in people who carry a fault, or a mutation, in the BRCA1, also known as the BRCA1 gene. A woman with a triple negative breast cancer should be referred to a genetic oncologist or a familial cancer clinic if she was under the age of 40 at the time the cancer was diagnosed or if she has a family history of breast or ovarian cancer. The initial HER2 test is often a staining test. As you can see, 1 plus means very little staining and 3 plus means a lot of staining. If the staining is more than 1 plus, a gene test is done on the tumour. These tests are called ISH tests, and in this example I'm showing you the FISH test, that is, where the markers fluoresce. The amount of staining for the control gene, in this example fluorescing green, should match that of the HER2 gene, in this example fluorescing pink. As you can see on the right, there is much more pink than green. This is because the cancer cells have made many more copies of the HER2 gene, which is in turn making many more receptors than a normal cell would have. This is referred to as HER2 overexpression. So, you now have a good understanding of the terms used on a breast cancer pathology report, and you also understand how the report describes not just the type of cancer, but helps your doctor to decide on what kind of therapy is needed. You also understand that the type of breast cancer, such as a triple negative breast cancer, may actually be a flag, along with the age that the cancer occurred and any relevant family history, that a referral should be made to a genetic oncologist or a family cancer clinic. I'd like to acknowledge that the tissue slides in this presentation were provided by the Pathology Department of the Royal North Shore Hospital in Sydney, Australia. You can find more informative videos on our video channel and more information about the assessment and management of inherited cancer syndromes is available on our website. Thank you.